Hi everyone, this is Dave Matthews here with Lunenburg 360 and today we're in the, the shop, the backyard, the, the work area with Chris Letart at yeah. the work area from Whalem Painting and Woodcraft. That's what we call it. Okay, yeah. cool. Tell, tell the folks what you do. Well, right now on Book Solid I make chainsaw carvings and paint them or not paint them. It's, it's commissioned orders. People say, can you make a mermaid? And I say, of course I can. <laughs> And we do sketches and we'll either do an email back and forth where we talk about size and color and price and all that. Then I make it here, it goes inside, I paint it, varnish it, and they either pick it up or I do a delivery. Okay. So I'm booked right now solid into October. Yes. So when you're getting like the different woods in, I mean, do you have in mind what you're going to do with the woods when it comes in? Or well, do you what happens kind is of the, stick to you? The wood comes in. And it's loggers generally have a pile of wood that's pine, that's a low grade that can't go to the mill. You can't make boards to build a house. Okay. So they've got stuff they don't want, and I want it. So they bring it. It gets dumped. I strip the bark, cut it up into different size sections, and usually I'll get somebody to come with a backhoe and we'll move it. So right now, my guy right now is Ray Morin down the street. He's also a Lunenburg guy. Comes with a backhoe. It's got a boom on it. And we pick up these pieces. Even this one had to be 600 pounds. He came over, we lassoed it, picked it up, set it this way so that I could work on the uh, horizontal. So how did you come to this line of work? What's your history? How did you get I'm to this a, line of art? Uh, I have a BFA in illustration, so two-dimensional painting. Yeah, that's a leap. That's a leap. That, after trying for a few years, is very hard to break into, you know. Like a, becoming a children's book illustrator from what my instructors used to say is like like being a rock star. So you got a garage band, you're never going to be Aerosmith, you know. Yeah. But um, no, I just bounced around from job to job that wasn't art related. And finally I just said, I'm going to do this. I had bought a book and a VHS tape. For in, self taught. In 2002 just to get the ball rolling and then the rest is self-taught. If you have the artistic vision, you... Sure. And then it's the tools. Half of my time is taking care of chainsaws okay. and figuring out. Now I'm a small engine mechanic also. Well, you got to, right? You Over have time to. Or else you're down the shop? Yeah. Nice. Is it all chainsaw or is there it's, other chisels? And... It's chainsaw. Once I get the basic idea, I... As you can see, we draw where we're at. So this is going to be a dog's ear, and that's his, you know, that's going to be his leg and his haunches. But the only other tool I actually use all the time is an angle grinder with a sanding disc, different grit sanding discs. And then, when all said and done, just like the bear you saw in the garage, the darker is a burn. So I have a torch. It's almost like a landscapers use to burn weeds in driveways. It's a flamethrower, really, but I'll burn it. And if that looks good, I'll leave it. If it doesn't, I'll sand it some more and then burn it again. So you've got, like, the most fun job in the world because it's chainsaws, it's burning stuff. It's Right. Okay. Not a bad kid. No. <laughs> no. It's all, all the things I do enjoy, yeah. And I, I mix in other things that I like. Just recently did a comic con, so I made some oh. superheroes. Okay. I like comic books. It made sense. So they loved it. I'm gonna go back and do the New Hampshire one in September. Nice. Okay. I do the Boston one, but they're always booked up, and they're a lot more expensive. To sure. Well, yeah. Anytime you go to a trade show or yeah. whatever, it's, it tends to be yeah. pretty. Yeah. Everywhere the best I go, I pay for the table, but some of them cost more than others. Yes. But you make one sale usually. Okay. And so hopefully it's pay, worth it. You know, last one I did, I made enough to pay for the weekend, okay. pay for the hotel, because the kids always come too. Yeah. It's a whole thing. We have fun. What, what's, what's your what's your family situation? You got kids here? Yeah, there's room? a there's a three and a six year old in nice. the, inside right now with my wife who she teaches school so she's oh, okay. she's home. Now are you Lunenburg origin? I'm Lunenburg. I, I mean, technically I was born in Worcester, but just because my mother my grandparents were Worcester, and I'm not even sure of the story as to why I was born there. But no, I'm born and raised here. I went to art school and then came home. Okay. And now. As far as the finishes on the wood, I mean, what's the 
well, what's your process? You know, what are usable materials? And then what's yeah. the, the, the useful life of it? And then I, how am, you I am uh, softwood, so yeah. it's pine or spruce or sometimes hemlock. And, and it, a lot of it is what they bring me, what the loggers bring me. And then I, I, it's a process where I learn what's best. And then it gets carved, sanded, burnt. I bring it in. If the customer wants it painted, I fully paint it. And then if it's winter time, I keep it in the basement and I'll give it a water-based clear coat, okay. which lasts for quite some time. <clears throat> but I prefer the urethane that's called spar varnish. It's made for outside. It just okay. it gives it a more real finished look. Yeah. But I can't... Right now, I can't do that in the winter because it stinks up the whole house. Oh, well, yeah, there'll be a fume hazard, huh? Yeah, it's toxic. You saw I was wearing a mask. Sure, even outdoors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it gives you a headache, you know? Some people well, like that, that, but <laughs> well. not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, you know, some people want natural, so okay. I'll be at the Boston Seafood Festival this Sunday, and I make whales and things to bring there, and I'll always leave something natural. Because yep. if someone sees one that's painted, oh, I wish it wasn't, then you have one that's not painted, okay. and, you know. Yeah, and I take orders at those things, too, so. Yeah. Even if they don't buy something, they'll usually call me later with some ideas. Now, do people ever come to you and say, I've got this chunk of wood, and I want it to be something, X? Or yeah, what? yeah, this, this morning I went to a gentleman's house in Fitchburg. He's got a pine tree that's like 12 feet tall. Okay. He had the top cut off and all the tr limbs are off. It's been dead for about a year, so it's perfect for carving. And he wants an owl, just an owl, maybe sitting on some rocks or some leaves or something organic on the bottom. So, yeah, that happens. And I get a lot of the, hey, I got this wood in my yard. You want to come get it? Oh. And I have to explain to them that I don't have any machinery and then give them the phone number of somebody who can <laughs> haul it away. go haul it away because they just want to get rid of it. But you know within a second when you meet somebody, either at a fair or if they come to the house, you'll know if they really want something. Okay. You know, you know right away. Or, if, or yeah, they just... They just want to look around, you know, they're going to offer to sell you wood or something. It's, right. you know, you live and learn. You know, what's, as I look at this, I mean, you've been working on this how long? Realistically, I'm, I'm only, if you count the time moving it and stripping it and sanding it, we're not even at a full day's work, eight okay. to ten hours of work. So when and it's I, all done, what do you have into it? Estimate. Yeah, I always say. The carving process is between 15 and 20 hours, maybe, okay. for something big. Yeah. Little things like a little bear, or in the wintertime I make snowmen, I can make a oh, snowman cool. in an hour. Okay. You know? Everything. So more detail is more time. Sure. And obviously, the cost is, for me and the customer is it's gonna go up. more, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of labor. A lot of labor. I mean, I look at this, I see a slab of wood, and I see where you're going with it. I'm just, yeah, I mean, it amazes it's, me, like, it's physical labor. But. You've got some ears drawn out here, but. Right, You've got to so, get them on both yeah, dimensions. You can see how the tail, we're starting to get a dimension on the tail. I've got some spray paint here. I'm going to, you know, you'll, the head will be smaller, you know. And then I'll show you the stand I made. But yeah, you can see the weight on that. I was going to roll it, but I don't even want to try right now. Because this one will carve underneath because it's going to get mounted to the stand here. <laughs> Coming back. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it'll get mounted to that stand. And then when I go deliver it, it's going to get bolted into uh, concrete. Okay. Mm. And as far as life, like you had asked your last question, this one off the ground is going to last forever. Okay. Um, and when someone buys something that sits on the ground, I always tell them, put it on a rock, put it on some bricks. Get it up off. Put, a, put some trap rock under it so because it's like a live tree. If sure. it sits in the wet, it's going to suck the wet up. Yeah. And it's going to rot from the inside out. Okay. So if they're taken care of, I think they can last quite some time. Okay. And you recoat them? <coughs> yeah, I, I will. I that's an option. It would, you know, I tell people, if you bring it back within a year, if you want to tune up or coat, I'll do it. You know, and then after that, I just I'll have to charge <coughs> them, but not you know just a menial charge of sure. you know well, the gallon of labor. the but gallon of urethane or whatever. Yeah, they know. <coughs> it's worth investing that extra yeah. bit to keep it that much longer. Yeah, and the ones I paint, I can fill in the cracks <coughs> no. with you know house. House caulking, okay. like painters' exterior house caulking. You can fill in a crack, let it dry, yep. repaint it. Okay. Nice. You know. You said this stand is this something you had made up? This stand was made down the street, another Lunenburg business, Bryco Welding. Oh. I drew them a picture and told them about how much weight I needed it to hold. And they made it. From and, there. Yep. 
It's a substantial piece. Yeah, specific. See, the last dog I did like this was mounted to a six or seven hundred pound piece of granite, wow. which I delivered, my father and I, in the back of his F-150. Very nice. We rolled it out, rolled it up as a couple stairs. It was quite a so, treat, it was a it was a big install. This one's gonna go easier. So I'll get this on this, finish carving it and paint it, then get the whole thing into okay. the back of a truck. Nice. Whether or not I need someone to move it for me or by the time I cut another 100, 150 pounds off of it, two guys will be able to pick it up. Manager. Yeah. Okay. Nice. No, it's just interesting, Lunenburg business, supporting yeah. Lunenburg business with Brightco. Yeah, see, I've learned own. in the last few months that I can't do it all myself. Yeah. I used to, last year before I made friends with Ray down the street, I would have rolled this around the corner and up this hill, right. and it would have taken me all day. Then I would have stood it up and leaned it down, and that would have been a full day's work. And he comes so over in like 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Right equipment, right tools. Yep. Nice. Good to see. Yep. Okay. So if, if people want to get in touch with you, you've got a website? I Yeah, it's just whalenpainting.com. Okay. And they can, there's an email link in the website. And... I'm all over social media. My Facebook page just broke a thousand, oh. which is probably ninety percent of how I get my work. But the funny thing is, it's still very local. Yeah, it's Facebook, but it's still very local. I haven't paid them to advertise really, right. so it's organic. The people that like the page are people in a sixty-mile radius, you know. Yeah. Interesting. And realistically, you could build something, carve something for anybody anywhere in the country. I could. Have a I have. Could there be an interest? I have two American flags, not made yet, but they will be being shipped to Great Bend, Kansas, okay. coming up in August. Cool. But cool. the shipping is, it gets you. Yeah. So just just the weight on the, the estimated weight on the flags to go to Kansas is going to be in the 80 to $100 just to ship it there. Sure. So that's why I tell people when they, <clears throat> they're thinking big, I have to talk them down. A little smaller if it's something that I can't deliver. Because I'll deliver anywhere from Mass, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, okay. Maine. As long as it's within a couple hours. I, sure. yeah. And I've met people halfway, too. Okay. Must be an interesting transaction in the rest area. <laughs> oh, uh, well, we, we were at the Manchester airport, and I had a uh, three-and-a-half-foot-tall Boston Terrier dog I carved in the back of the car. We, the security like came up. Oh, really? Yeah, they wanted to know what that was, but it turned out they just were interested in what it was. Like, we want to see it. That's cool. Not like, why do you have a dog in the back of your car that's made out of wood? And that, <laughs> we need to check that for security reasons. They just, they were interested, that's all. That's you find that a lot of people are just interested, which sure. is pretty well, awesome. It catches your eye. I mean, even driving down Whale of Road here, there's yeah. the whale tails out there. Yep. And you drive by, it's like, what's, what's that all about? It's it took a while for people to figure out what that was all about. Yeah. So now, now they, most of the people in the area know. Okay. that I, I make things you know the other day a guy just randomly I'm working with the chainsaw a guy just I turn around and he's right there hey how you doing whoa What's I guess you thing? are a carver he says I guess well, he just was I'm checking sure on me sneak up on a guy with a chainsaw is not a good idea I don't it's think it's me. a good idea <laughs> of course I'm, I'm I also wear the mask and the ear protection while I'm carving yeah. with the chainsaw so you got the, the Michael Myers mask yeah it's a, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's what I have learned is that I've made friends with a guy who brought me some wood, and his father did this for years. Yeah. We, he now has something wrong with his brain. They can't figure it out, and they can only equate it to something in the pine that he's been breathing in all these years. Out of the sealer. Or the sealer, <laughs> so. So, the just you got to be safe. That and yeah. the, there's enough sawdust that you don't want to inhale solid particles. Sure. It's, yeah. So, your lungs so you're careful. But when someone sneaks up on you, it is a little. Yeah, a little jarring. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to no let problem. us visit with you. Yeah. I hope uh, people around town get to know you a little bit, see the products you've got, and you know, spread the word. Thank and, you. And I uh, hope you're booked out next time we see you for even further. I'd but, like to be booked out for a solid year. So I that would be a good goal. You know, because eventually there's a few things we need. We need a, a storage container or some, some kind of a metal box that I can put a wood stove in. Okay. To dry the wood out. What you're talking about is just oh. a big kiln. Yeah. You know, things like that. I need to get a trailer. So when I do my craft shows, I don't have to shove everything in the family SUV. But for now, I'm happy to be doing what I like. Cool. So well, congratulations. I mean, you go through life, and it's not often people get that opportunity. 
yep. do it, they're following their passion, do what they really want to do. So I'm envious. Well, you, really. you can thank my wife. She's she my last job. I come home miserable every day. Yeah. She's like, why don't you just quit and do what you want to do? So now we're two and a half years later, and that's I'm, awesome. I'm having a successful run. People always say that. Not many people do it. So that's yeah, really cool. So, so congratulations. Thank you. Thanks again for the time. Appreciate no it. Okay, everyone. Again, Chris Latarn here. Um, come on, get something carved. Be worth it. It's a good guy. Thank you.